Hi guys and welcome back to the show. In my last video I did a pretty unfavorable review of this planer, the Shapok HMS 850 and other kinds of planers of this style. But what if you've already purchased this kind of planer or this kind of planer is your only choice? Let's look at how you can live with that purchase and that means in this video we're building a new fence for it. So let's not waste any more time and get right down to this. Luke, I am Nomad Makes. I will be making a shelf fixed to the back of the planer with rails for a carriage to slide in and fix the fence to the carriage. Some of the mechanism of the planer is housed behind this plate, so I don't want to drill holes to the planer housing. This represents a challenge as these original screws are quite small. I'd like to take this opportunity to say that while this project may not necessarily be difficult, it may be a bit intricate. Now let's play a game and I call it let's come up with strange part names and this part Baby Vader suggested that I call the mounting plate. Name suggestions for the parts of this project are welcome in the comments below. Since the original screws are very short and I don't want to weaken the wood further I decided to counterbore the holes with a regular drill bit with a shallow tip instead of using a normal countersinking bit. There are several doohickeys and thingamabobs sticking out from the rear planer housing and I need to make room for them for the mounting plate to sit flush against the planer housing. This first rebate was a perfect candidate for using my orange tool CMT flat tooth grind grooving blade and you'll find an affiliate link for this blade in the video description. To make space for the roller axles I need to remove some more material and I chose to use my trim router for this small task. There is a small metal plate protruding above the table just below the blade guard and I needed to make a small recess in the shelf to allow for this. This clip was shot before I mounted the York bench vise, so here I improvised with some clamps. Now you can get by without the vise, but man does it make your life easier to have one. Again using my 6mm CMT grooving blade I cut a groove in the shelf for the mounting plate.
and then I routed out another rebate to allow for more protruding planar parts. This will become the brackets that support the shelf. Even though it will be possible to compensate for a lot of crookedness at the end, I aim to keep all parts as square as possible to the table, so the adjustment at the end is as small as possible. I don't remember why I made this mitre cut on the sled. The workplace is not really well supported and it is a risky cut. Now, just because I am sometimes an idiot, you don't have to be. So this is how the lower part goes together and I was aiming at getting it parallel with the tables and more or less one millimeter proud of it, which it looks like I've managed. I've salvaged some desktops that were being thrown away. This is quite strong and very stable laminated HDF I think and I believe it will serve well as the new fence. I have this bad habit of supporting the track saw in front of it. And again, just because I am an idiot, it doesn't mean that you have to be. Now we are going to start building the carriage, which needs rails on the sides, a slider, brackets and a thingamajig I will call a stringer to connect the brackets and serve as a fixing point for the fence. Getting a cut this long square without a track square is a bit tricky, so I adjusted it on the table saw. And I cut the rails on the crosscut sled, since I want them dead nuts accurate, and I don't really trust my mitre saw to make cuts that accurate. While I was at it, I also cut the slider. My initial plan was to make the slots in the slider far apart to give more sideways support for the carriage, but that meant a narrower stance for the brackets holding the fence. And the slider is supported by the rails, so I will be drilling new holes for the slots later. I forgot to start the camera for the next cut, so here is a Rag and Bone Brown inspired reenactment.
This time I did the sensible thing and made the miter cut on the miter saw. Using relative dimensioning to mark the cut for the stringer, I offered up the pieces and then marked them, resulting in a better accuracy than if I measured it. I'll make holes for four screws to tighten the carriage to the shelf to give a firm support for the fence. To make the slots in the slider, I will drill out four holes and then connect them using the router. Maybe a trim router isn't the best tool for this, but my cheap plunge router is fixed to a plate and I wanted to see if the Ryobi could handle this. The lack of dust collection makes the cut more difficult to see for the operator and the router really doesn't like longer router bits. Again, maybe this is user error, but I am not very impressed by this router as of yet.
As you can see I am using the full width of the slider to give a wide stance for the brackets for a better support for the fence. I'm trying to build the carriage as square as possible so I don't have to adjust the fence that much at the end and if possible give it a bit of negative camber as it is easier to shim out the top rather than the bottom of the fence. Another observation I'd like to share with you is that this type of waxed formwork plywood holds screws quite well even driven in from the side. I've probably said this before, but this build is not really difficult, it is more intricate, so to speak.
and this is perfect. A small strip of light on the top indicating a tiny negative camber. So we are dealing eights and aces to the planer to shim up the fence and if you want to know why check out my review of this machine. I will find the screws with a more appropriate length later, but these were the ones I had on hand. <laughs> yes! Booga! <laughs> Ah, 
So I guess it's quite obvious what I thought about the result. And on a flimsy IKEA lock table as a base I had to test the new fence. As you can see by the strip on the lower side of the board face, my planer was hungry at some point and I fed it some screws. So if you have happened to purchase this kind of planer, this is one way to make the upper part of it actually usable. But again that is it for today guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video, if you did please remember to leave a thumbs up, if this is your first visit to my channel please consider subscribing, should you want to support me you will find a Patreon link and affiliate links to products I use and recommend below. If you don't feel like that you can help by telling your friends about the channel on your social media of choice. Cheers guys and I'll catch you in the next one.